Hello and welcome to our basic point of care ultrasound in emergency HSUV prepared by the Emergency and Trauma Department, Hospital Kuala Lumpur. We'll continue our lectures with the ALTA assessment. A bit of an outline uh, of the lecture, uh, we go to the learning objectives, introduction, ultrasound techniques, clinical applications, pearls and pitfalls. For the objectives is to learn anatomy of thoracic and abdominal ulcer, to know and understand optic ultrasound techniques, to understand more features of thoracic and abdominal aortic aneurysm, and to understand the features of dissecting aneurysm. A bit of introduction. For thoracic ulcer or ascending aortic dissection, it is uncommon with the mortality rate approaches 1 to 2% per hour from the time of diagnosis over 24 to 48 hours with potential survival rate of 70%. It is known as a great masquerader in view of the most of the thoracic aortic aneurysm have no symptoms. Aneurysm that produces symptoms are typically very large and very high risk of leaking. When occur, patient can represent with symptoms of chest pain or upper back pain, which usually mimic a uh, Myocardial, myocardial infection or the uh, heart attack. For abdominal aorta aneurysm, the lifetime incidence of AAA is 8.9% in males and 2.2% in females. This is based on the study uh, in the United States done in 2015. For early diagnosis of AAA decreases the mortality rate from 75% to 35%. And for the presentation, the patient might be presented with an unexplained syncope, hypotension, weakness, abdominal pain, and back pain. Most of the time, it usually comes with a low back pain. So we go on anatomy. The ata is the major conduit conveying blood from the heart to systemic circulations. So actually, it, originates immediately beyond the aortic valve. Beyond the aortic valve. And it gives off the uh, descending aorta with it of the coronary arteries. Then the curves forming the aortic arc with branches, typically the brachiocephalic trunk. An example of uh, innominate arteries, which provide the branches of uh, left uh, common carotid artery and left subclavian artery. As we go down towards the descending aorta, there will be a uh, descending aorta and also we go down further up down towards the hiatus of diaphragm. Below the diaphragm, we already start on the abdominal aorta, which has stand retroperitoneally to its uh, bifurcation of the common iliacs which located at the level of the fourth vertebrae. So let's dive into the thoracic aorta. For thoracic aorta, I will highlight two main views that we need to obtain to better evaluate the thoracic aorta, which are the suprasternal notch view and parasternal long axis view. For the suprasternal notch view, or we call it as SSNV, for probe selection, we use a face array probe, or we call it as a cardiac probe, which have a, the small footprint of the face array probe allows to go through the uh, small space of the uh, sternal notch. For positioning of the patient, usually we'll be in supine position with neck slightly extended. And to make ease for the neck extension, we can put uh, below, just below the uh, left shoulder, behind the patient, okay? Probe position, we can place the probe in the suprasternal notch and rotate the probe towards one to two o'clock, which is the probe marker towards the uh, left ear. Okay, once uh, we get the view, actually this is the uh, video of uh, ultrasound clips at which what uh, view we can see once we uh, get the image acquisition. Uh, 
Okay, so once we manage to get the image, the landmark that we should see are the brachiocephalic artery, left common carotid artery, left subclavian artery, and also we can get the right pulmonary artery. So to measure, we will be measuring out the arch in a wall to inner wall. Based on studies, EP performed focused cardiac ultrasound was consistent with CTA measurements for maximal thoracic aortic diameters. And of course, this is with multiple times of practice and use, get used with the view of the suprasternal nose view itself. And as to get a better diameter of the uh, thoracic uh, alpha. We continue with the next view, that is the parasternal long axis. One of the easiest view to obtain, and still we are using the same probe, which is the fist array probe, with patient can be in supine position or left lateral cubitus. And the probe marker points towards the patient's right shoulder. The parasternal long axis view usually lies at the left sternal edge, anywhere between the second and fifth intercostal space. So the view which we can obtain uh, by this positioning of the probe is uh, the parasternal long axis, which is the right ventricle, left ventricle, left atrial, and descending outer. But the main focus uh, for us uh, from this view is the outer itself. So usually we need to move more towards the patient's uh, right side to get a good view of the outer outer so this is the clips of uh, view of the plaques of parasternal long axis view okay next we go towards the outtake group itself. Okay, this is the sinus valsalva. For the outtake root, actually consists of three sinus valsalva, sinotubular junction, and also proximal ascending alpha. So we need to remember for the measurement purposes, we can divide the uh, we can divide it towards the uh, uh, we take the aortic annulus uh, as the landmark okay this is the aortic annulus we take the aortic annulus as the landmark and for the uh, aortic field and also the ventricular field so for the aortic field the measurement would be from the leading edge towards the leading edge and for the ventricular uh, uh, field, which is uh, the aortic annulus, will be inner field to the inner wall to the inner wall. So this is the aortic annulus. The measurement should be from inner wall to inner wall. In general, for the outer measurement, there are several uh, method on measuring the outer, which is the mixed method, that is a leading edge to leading edge, and also the external method, leading edge to trailing edge. And also the internal method of trailing edge to leading edge, atau kita panggil, uh, we call it as a inner edge to inner edge. So for the external method, we use uh, in uh, assessing, assessing the uh, uh, abdominal outer. So for the thoracic aneurysm classification, there are several classification by using uh, Stanford uh, classification type A and also type B. The differences is uh, between uh, type A and type B is the involvement of the thoracic outer and also the abdominal outer itself. For type uh, A, for type one, uh, type A, sorry, will be involving the thoracic outer and also the abdominal outer, or it can be the thoracic outer alone. If in type B, just uh, sparing the thoracic alpha, but just involving the abdominal alpha. 
So for acute dissecting aneurysm, there will be direct sign and indirect sign. For the direct sign, there will be a dilated aortic root and intimal flap. For indirect sign, they can come with a pericardial effusion and from the car doppler, we can see the aortic regurgitation. Before we proceed with how to acquire the views needed for abdominal aorta scan, let's review some of the basic anatomy, starting approximately at the Zyphot process. Uh, a few structures actually I want to highlight. This is the celiac trunk, which come out of the aorta proximally. Further down, we see the supramesentric artery, and further down for the, in the, at the level of the umbilicus, we can see the aorta bifurcation to right and left common iliac arteries. So for the abdominal aorta, the diameter, the, uh, for the diameter, the normal size will be less than 2.5 centimeter. If it's less, uh, more than three centimeter, it is uh, dilated and more than five centimeter, the risk of leak will be higher. And for the common iliac, uh, 20 to 40% involvement. And for the measurement wise, more than 1.5 centimeter is aneurysmal. So 75% of the cases, most of the time, uh, the rupture will be into the retroperitoneum, only 25% intraperitoneum. So this is another study, uh, similar, quite similar to the previous study that I've shown earlier, which is the emergency medicine residents with appropriate training can accurately determine the presence of AAA, similar to the previous investigations of ultrasound in the hands of uh, sonography technicians and radiologists. So emergency ultrasound basically can accurately measure aortic diameter in patients with AAA. In these studies, it actually uh, make a uh, comparison between uh, measurements by the with emergency ultrasound and also the sonography. And from that, just a brief of one millimeter difference between the measurements of by both of the specialties. Okay, we have done with the thoracic aorta. Now we'll go through the abdominal aorta. So there will be a proximal aorta, mid aorta, distal aorta, and iliac bifurcation. So for the abdominal aorta and aorta, thoracic aorta itself, we need to see the aorta as a whole. That means for the abdominal aorta itself, we need to get a four different main view. This approximate level, mid level, distal level, and also the replication level. So for the abdominal aorta at the proximal level, what we can see for the anatomical, just uh, we go high on the cyphot process just below it, I as high as you can go uh, as you can get. So the probe must be in perpendicular towards the, to the abdomen to get a true cut. So what we can see uh, at the proximal aorta, first the landmark that we need to identify is the aorta itself, the IVC, and the vertebral body or the spine. How we can know that is this a uh, vertebra? So usually there will be a hyperacuic uh, line here with a black or an acute shadowing just down to the vertebra line. Just anterior to the vertebra, there will be a outer, and beside it, or to the patient's right, there will be the IVC. So the placement of the probe, this one will go towards the short axis view or the transverse view with the Mark, uh, probe marker to the patient right. Then, when we achieve uh, this image, with this image acquisition, we move our probe cordially. Then, from here, we can get a celiac trunk, okay, celiac trunk, and also the branches itself. So, this is the video. We might need to angle a little bit uh, our probe to get this view. And to remember, our image always will be, most possibly will be obscured by the gas shadow. 
show two tips that I can share that we can how to get a clearer view and to get rid of the bower gas. So one is that you give a constant pressure, gentle and constant pressure around 10 to 30 seconds. Just give a gentle pressure until you get a good view of the altar and also the IVC. And another tip is that to get the patient to lift up the uh, knee to relax the muscle, abdominal muscle. For that, you can uh, properly give a good pressure to the abdomen and indirectly can get rid of the power gas shadow. Okay. So this is uh, what we call uh, the celiac trunk, okay, which will give the branch to the uh, common hepatic artery and also the splenic artery. So like I mentioned previously, for the abdominal outer, the measurement method will be the outer wall to outer wall. So where's the location the best to measure the diameter? Just go through the whole abdominal outer and then get the uh, widest uh, diameter available and get a measurement from there. So we move more cowder towards the mid level. So here we can see the superior mesentery artery. Okay, just super, uh, anterior to the uh, superior mesentery artery. Uh, the outer will be the superior mesentery artery. Then just above it is the splenic vein. Splenic vein is indirectly can be a landmark to the pancreas itself. So you can say this is the body of the pancreas. Okay, we go to the more caudally, to the distal level of the abdominal outer, just above the umbilicus level. So as you can see here, what's the difference between the proximal view and the mid view, the outer uh, location? As you can see, the aorta here will be more superficial as due to the curvature of the spine. So to be more certain or to get the proper aortic view, we need to zoom in for measurement. We need to decrease the depth further. Okay. So this is the ultrasound clips of the aorta at the distal level. Now we do down further to the defecation level. Here we can see the uh, what the name shows is the defecation. So it will be uh, defecated to the common elect arteries. So you can see here the outer defecates to the common elect arteries. So how we can uh, measure this? We just need to freeze the image and then we just measure one uh, either right common iliac arteries or the left common iliac arteries and make sure and remember not to be more than 1.5 centimeter in diameter so for the outer view we need to do it in two views in order to get a good measurement and to make sure that we are in a good uh, trajectory or image acquisition. So this is the transfer, uh, the longitudinal view of the outer, where you can see the cilia and also the uh, SNA. So this is the measurement. The same goes to uh, like the transverse view of the outer. The measurement should be from outer wall to outer wall. Okay, so the whole slide of the abdominal aorta previously I already mentioned on the aorta itself. But then, as you can see, the aorta and IVC sit side by side. So how can we differentiate between the IVC and the aorta? So as you can see here, the aorta has a rounded shape, while the IVC can be rounded and also slit like. Okay. And the positioning of the aorta itself is to the left of a midline or okay, and thick wall, round shape, smaller in size compared to the IVC, 
and it's non-compressible. For the IVC, it's obviously to the right of midline or the patient's right. Thin wall, it can be round or shaped, bigger in size and compressible with respiration. As through this kit, we can see the IVC is compressible with respiration. Okay, so I previously mentioned on how to measure the abdominal alpha, but then which view is the best to get a measurement or to get a proper diameter? So basically, for the measurement, we will do it in transverse view. So while I'm in a perpendicular, the probe must be perpendicular to the abdomen. Why is this so? For us to get a proper cut of the uh, abdominal outer. Okay. So let's say if we use it as a longitudinal view, we might have been cut here. So the diameter is not maximum. Okay. So might as well we get a false measurement. Compared to the abdominal aorta in transverse view, if we put it in a perpendicular view, we'll get a true cut or the true diameter of the uh, aorta itself. But remember, slight uh, tilting of the probe or the angulation of the probe might as well we call it as the term as a salami slice, at which can make the measurement of the diameter also wrongly measured. So for the clinical application of the ultrasound, and the outer and the abdominal outer and also the outer, we go from the torsi the outer itself to a notch view. So grossly here, we can see the outer part is di uh, dilated. It's more than four centimeters. Okay. And we can see here, there will be a very quick line here that we call it as a flat. So let's see the clips. Okay. So we can see here the flat moving around in, in the outtick arc. Okay. So for the thoracic outta itself, I just go briefly. This one is the parasternal long axis view. This is the normal outta, uh, parasternal long axis view with a normal outta. And you can see over here, obviously the outta is uh, dilated and also dissected with the intimal flat that we can see here. Remember, you must get the true measurement and not uh, wrongly measure the flat. So that's why we need to get it from the leading edge towards the inner edge. Leading edge to leading edge, sorry. So for the normal outer here, for the normal outer root over the sinus tubula, we can see here there's a norm. But then in the dilated or dissected uh, outer and preserve, we can see the effacement of the sinotubular junction. So once we see the effacement of the sinotubular junction, usually we can consider it as dilated. Okay, this is the view of the abdominal alpha in a transverse view and longitudinal view. So that's why I said the abdominal alpha we need to at least do in two views, which is the transverse view and also the longitudinal view. As for the transverse view, we can get it as a dilated abdominal alpha and also the intimal flap. But then, with the longitudinal view, that part of the abdominal alpha is not dilated on normal uh, normal measurement, but one part of it will have a dilatation and also the flap, which uh, based on the uh, two types of abdominal alpha that is a uh, uh, out the aneurysm, which is a fusiform and a circular view. So, for the algorithm of the abdominal outer aneurysm, 
With patient suspected with triple A, we proceed with the aorta ultrasound. And if the aorta ultrasound is negative, we need to consider other diagnosis. Okay, for if positive, and we need to see whether the patient is stable or unstable. If it's unstable, we must get a cons uh, surgical consultation and push the patient to operation theater as soon as possible. But if the patient is stable, we might can get a CT angio of the thoracic uh, or the uh, surgical consultation for uh, review. So for the pulse and pitfalls of the abdominal aorta, we need to uh, the focus abdominal assessment of aorta may rule out an aneurysm but cannot be used to confirm the rupture. Need to image the entire aorta to exclude abdominal aortic aneurysm. Very limited sections of the descending thoracic aorta can be seen with a TTE, so pathology of these segments is limited. That, as previously mentioned in the initial anatomy of the thoracic aorta, where I show the descending aorta, we just can see part of the descending aorta, but not the whole of the descending aorta. And the IVC mistaken for the aorta. Okay. So hopefully with the previous uh, slide that I mentioned, the differences between aorta and the so IVC will make us uh, can differentiate between the IVC better. So the bowel gas and obesity may make imaging of the aorta challenging as air is the enemy of the ultrasound. For take home message, SSNV, supersternal notch view, and PLATS view, or parsternal long axis view for thoracic aorta, that's the two main view. Abdominal aorta ultrasound in AAA is high in specificity and sensitivity, easy to perform. Interpretation still need to correlate with clinical history, examinations, and also have hemodynamical status, uh, status as in the algorithm. So I think that's all for my lecture for today on aortic assessment. Hopefully you get a brief of understand, uh, understanding on the abdominal aorta and also the thoracic aorta. So I end my lectures again with uh, thank you and assalamualaikum.